there are a lot of good-looking women in this town? It's like heaven compared to the town we grew up in. You remember Liz? Prom queen? Elizabeth Scott Moore. She could be royalty with a name like that. But you know, she was like an actress from a B-movie, wasn't she? Bleached blonde hair, too much makeup, clothes showed off her cleavage, and that mole by her mouth. Say, Zach, were you with me back then? You know, that mole was made with makeup, right? We happened to be on the same bus once. I saw her drawing on with makeup. I wasn't surprised, I guess. Just impressed that she would go that far to create that image. Do you remember that movie we went to go see that day? I'll give you a hint. It was The Force in a popular series. And was produced by Menachem Golan's and Canon Films. Figured it out, Zach? Think it over then. Call it your homework until next time. Jack, here's the Ben Franklin you wanted. Give it to me. Benjamin, I wanted to talk to you. Have you heard this yet? I'll tell you another one when I see you again. <laughs> Zack, did you see that? It was as if we weren't here. I wonder what that was all about. Did it make sense to you?
<laughs> hey, bro. Hey man, the spot on the map is called Cope's Tunnel. It's one of a couple of places in town where like, spooky stuff happens. I'll tell you a story, okay man? But uh, don't go spreading it around. The spirits, they don't like publicity. Back when this place was a lumber kingdom, you know, the rockin' 80s, that tunnel was the main connection from the lumber yard to this town. Every day, huge trailers would, like, come in and out. Lots of traffic, dude. Of course, some people were, like, all up in arms. Save our nature, stop pollution, you know. Big business was pushing in here from all over the U.S. of A. Everyone was bickering over the forest. So some of the town people got even more worked up, you know. They started a protest inside the tunnel itself. I guess maybe that was the start of all the... bad times. Bad times. Oh yeah, man. Rough stuff and heavy times, man. The conservationists and the lumber workers faced off with each other. Neither side was backing down, and that made things worse. Amid all this chaos, there was a man and a woman who got engaged. Problem was that the man was a lumberjack, and the woman, she was a tree hugger. They rarely ever fought, but then, one morning, they had a lover's quarrel. People think that her love of nature clashed with his profession. But we'll never know what they really were fighting about that morning. The man shouted. He called her an idiot. And then he stormed out and went to work. If only he had known, that would be the last word he would ever say to her. When he finished his work for the day, he got in his car and drove home. When he got to the tunnel, he saw lantern lights glowing faintly. Those fools, not again. He just thought they were protesting in the tunnel again. And to scare them a little, he decided to speed up. He probably thought they'd all scatter so he wouldn't hit them. But the lights didn't move. In fact, one came toward him. A second later, there was a thud, and the lantern flew up into the air. He slammed on his brakes too late, of course. Then, totally freaked climbed out to see what had happened. I don't need to tell you who he hit, do I? What's more, in her mangled hand, there was a letter to the head of the lumber mill. A peaceful settlement offer. The woman had no other relatives other than the man, and the lumber mill took no responsibility for the accident. It was going out of business anyways. What happened to the man then? No one saw him again. Some say he killed himself, or simply just vanished. You know, he might still be in the tunnel, weeping over his lost love. So now, some folks say there's a ghost of a young man that haunts the tunnel. I told you it was called Cope's Tunnel, right? Well, check this out. Some people call it Corpse Tunnel now. You better be careful, Mr. FBI, if you go down there by yourself. <laughs>
Hey! Zack, I'm glad I don't need a warrant to search a doghouse. <laughs> Looks like we've picked up a little bonus, too. We'll have to give Willie something to make up for this another time. sequel in a series that started in 1978. That's right, Zack. It was super... Hmm? Zack, we'll finish our chat later. Let's take a walk around here.
Now then, young fella, how do you feel about your current vehicle? My vehicle? It's a piece of crap, but I'm not here to talk about that. Then how about a little treasure hunt? Listen up, young man. My junkyard is actually a mountain of treasure. All kinds of treasure lies in those mountains of junk. The problem is, there's so many, I've lost track of where everything is. <laughs> You've caught on already. I can see it in your eyes. I need you to head out in the yard and find certain things for me. If you help me out, I'll customize your car a little. What are you talking about? Didn't I tell you to shut up and listen to your superiors? Now will you do it or not? I don't see any reason to refuse. Well said. First, I'll need some low gear parts. With that, I'll be able to boost the engine of your car. You'll find one around E5. Go! Don't just stand there, get going!
This is it. This will save your life someday, son. You sure know how to exaggerate. You imbecile. Engine boost is vital for bringing back soldiers alive from war. Engine boost? Of course. Engine boost is the basis of everything. Let me tell you a war story, son. I was leading my unit at the very front line. Things were bad, and sanitary conditions were worse. Endless guerrilla attacks were stripping us of our manpower. Everyone was tired to their limits. There was one sergeant who really rubbed me the wrong way. The boys like to call him Crybaby Timothy. He really gave me headaches, I can tell you. How? Just by breathing. His posture was bad. He was weak, slow, easily distracted. I have no idea who thought he was capable of combat in a war zone. He endangered the lives of every member of the unit. Stomach pains. The worst stomach ache ever. Every one of us. It was just cooking. He was using food that was contaminated. I flew into the dugout toilet like an Apache chopper returning to base. I have to tell you, it was a close call. My engine was boosting. And that's what got me there safely, right in the nick of time. What happened to the unit? You really want to know? It was a terrible sight. Powerful, athletic men, reduced to walking dead. Blinking like crazy, shaking with pain. Their confidence and self-esteem were all crushed. They almost didn't recover. An interesting story. <laughs> so you see the need for engine boost now, do you? I'll keep my side of the promise and get to work on your vehicle. That badge on him is for a sergeant. Looks like it was sewn on something else before it was sewn onto his shirt. I wonder what that's all about. I put in longer pistons and optimized your lower gears. That should add boost to your speed when you accelerate. But there's still plenty of stuff I can do to make your car go faster. Just come see me again and I'll customize your car a little more. sequel in a series that started in 1978. That's right, Zack. It was Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Lex Luthor was back. It was played by Gene Hackman. That alone made it a must for all us fans. I don't remember much more about it, though. I'm sure there was more trivia about it. Still forget 4. Richard Donner directed 1 and 2. Now those two were great movies. Christopher Reeve really shined as Superman. 
Actually, Zack, I've got a confession. I promise not to tell anyone because I'd be really embarrassed. I actually like the first two Superman movies more than the first two Star Wars movies. I think John Williams did a better job with the theme song for Superman. But whenever I try to hum it, it always turns into the Star Wars song somewhere along the way. I know it's strange, Zack. I know. So, Zack, which Richard Donner film do you like the best? No need to hurry. Take some time to think it over.
Hey, Fiona. What are you reading today? A medical textbook. <laughs> That's good. Keep studying like that and I'm sure Usha will notice. Really? It would be great if he did. I've been studying a lot recently, and I bet I know more than you. Are you trying to challenge me here? I sure am. You want to take the challenge? I can quiz you, you know. Sounds fun, Fiona. Okay, then. Here are the rules for this quiz. Answer three multiple-choice questions correctly in a row, and you win. Bring it on. Then just let me know when you're ready to start. Want me to start the quiz? <clears throat> Get ready then. Question one. <laughs> Correct! But that was only the warm up. Here comes question two. Correct 
again. But now, time to bring out the big guns. Question three. Why? How? I thought those questions were pretty tough. I'm sorry, Fiona. Was it childish of me to answer them all correctly? No, but it's childish of you to stand there smiling like a winner. I hate to admit it, but you win, Agent. Here, take this as a prize. Aw, oh, man. I don't feel like studying anymore right now.